The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour. And as always, we come at the appointed time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Well, we had the Fed minutes come out and had a little bit of everything for everyone. A little bit for the bulls, a little bit for the bears. Um, my quick glance uh, is that it's... Uh, highly confusing so i guess you're going to probably read into it uh, what you want to uh, there's a great uh, part in fiddler on the roof uh, where they're having a conversation and uh, he's uh, one guy says uh, there's one guy that's supposed to be adjudicating uh, to uh, an argument and uh, one guy says something and he goes well that's right and then the other guy says something he goes that's right. Then a third guy goes, they both can't be right. He goes, you're right. And that's kind of probably what we've got here, which is uh, certainly a, a kind of a, a read into it what you want. Um, I think when you read the first half of it, it's kind of bullish. You read the second half of it, it kind of ends on a sour note. And I'm not going to say it's 50-50. Uh, I'm going to say it's uh, 60 sour, 40% uh, sweet. Uh, so, yeah, they got a little bit of peanut butter in my chocolate. And you got a little bit of chocolate in my peanut butter. But, uh, yeah, there's always more peanut butter than chocolate, isn't there? I'm sure it's much cheaper. 877-927-6648. Uh, but uh, that's it. Well, anyway, we're slowly coming. And, man, uh, are they pushing hard uh, on the markets today on the financial infotainment things. Uh, could they be right? It could, but it seems uh, rather stretched, let me put it that way. But we'll see. Uh, generally, there's always uh, one side, and then there's another, and then yet another. But it just seems rather uh, kind of stretched, let me put it that way. So we'll see what the uh, close ends up being. Uh, and, and we're off about 25 points on the S&P cash. Okay, 877-927-6648. Email me at path at tfnn.com. And, of course, you can always put a message in the den. Uh, Let's see what we have here. I've got a couple more. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. Um, why don't we do a little history? We'll wait for the market to semi digest this. This is the second push higher. Eh, it's kind of hard to believe that, that this really, from what I read, that it's going to make that much difference by the end of the day. So I'm going to say that it's, uh, it was a uh, half-empty glass, but it uh, eh, could be worse. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. And 1982, on this day, the visitors by the ALBA band ALBA becomes the world's first commercial compact music disc pressed in Germany by Polygram Records, a subsidiary of Royal Philips Electronics. Philips and Sony co-developed the CD standard, which was designed to be the successor for the photograph record. By the time the CD went on sale in November of that year, about 150 titles had been produced. And... Uh, you know, and it took probably, what, about five years before they quit skipping in a car every time you hit a bounce. But, you know, if they were in your house, they weren't too bad. And if you got a, a expensive one, they didn't sound all that bad. 
But uh, I'm going to have to say that it took about five years for that to actually that technology to get up uh, to where I thought it was uh, at least decent audio quality, but it was okay. But uh, on this day, uh, we replaced uh, cassettes, which were replaced by eight tracks, which were replaced by AM radio all those days ago. And, of course, people, if you showed them a disc today and they were 15 years old, they may not know what you're look, what they're looking at. I only wonder if they think it's some kind of alien technology if you show a uh, 10-year-old an 8-track. Maybe, maybe I, I wonder if they, they'll think it was part of the Jurassic period. You never know. 877-927-6648. Look forward to your phone call today. Uh, of course, uh, we're going to be going into earnings. Uh, there's some other stuff going on at the moment, so let's go ahead and bring that up. Um, Denberry's talking about being bought out. Uh, they had a, uh, a uh, halt a little bit earlier in the day, uh, but uh, up to 88.99. That came out just a little while ago, so it hadn't been around. Uh, other halts uh, because of massive short squeezes uh, was Bed Bath & Beyond. It was uh, uh, halted for 15 minutes at around 10 a.m., it's got kind of a wide-ranging bar up here to the previous highs at 30 bucks, with a lot of volume, but not holding that high. And again, it's uh, one of those things where you just have to say, eh, you know, you know, you know, you know. It's no worth. It's worth five bucks. Everybody knows it's worth five bucks. But uh, as we talked about it uh, yesterday, and I think the day before, 40% uh, of the open float is. Um, is uh, shorted, and most people don't even ever think of just how easy it is to cause a short squeeze. If you've got a lot of the shares, all you got to do is move them all out of a margin account, which means that those short shares will be asked to be returned. So it's not uncommon to see CEOs and uh, big holders move their shares around, let everybody get all short, and then uh, pull them back and force a short squeeze. I'm hearing that that is a little bit about what's going on in Bed Bath and below. But, uh, you know, you, you don't want to take a lot of risks. So you try to get in as you're going sideways as it did for five bucks. And then you make sure and wallop the people that are late to the short party by uh, giving him a great dose of, uh, what, uh, $5 to $30. So that's five times as much. Um, always interesting to watch people that short stocks uh, that are five bucks. I don't understand it. Um, but again, we probably don't have to worry about them being traders for very long, do we? They'll be, uh, they'll be it. Anyway, uh, the market's just kind of bouncing around here trying to figure out what to do with the news. Of course, everybody, at least from what I could tell, uh, is absolutely as bullish as they can ever get. But uh, we'll see. Uh, after the bell, we've got Cisco. We'll talk about that as we return. inflation where your purchasing power is eroded there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold vista gold's flagship asset is the mount todd gold project in the northern territory of australia this is australia's largest undeveloped gold project we are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district this is a large-scale low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Free at one eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight internationally at seven two seven eight seven three seven six one eight. Well, the usual suspects are out flogging Apple today on Bloomberg and CNBC. Um, as far as a chart basis goes, it could be a whole lot worse. It's about, uh, it's about um, eh, I'm going to call it about equal. The one thing, you, you, you had decent volume on the way back up. Um, on a chart basis, you had a gap down on April 6th. That came down with about 90 million shares. You're into it with about 50 million shares, 51 now. Uh, so it's performing okay. It didn't have a lot of energy on the way back up, which is always uh, worrisome because that's where you get uh, big dropouts in the market. Uh, but uh, eh, it has become the IBM of our time in the 80s. Uh, the old saying was you could not get fired for buying IBM if you were in the stock market and bought something. And I have a feeling that Apple is the same thing these days. So keep a close eye on it. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of market gas right now. Uh, we'll see by the time the show's over. My guess is it's going to uh, kind of eh, even out a little bit, let me put it that way. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised to see, you know, uh, another 1% swing higher or lower before the end of the day. I'm thinking probably lower, though. Uh, okay, GLD, is it giving it up? And uh, let's go back to this. So we've got it here. Um, yeah, you've got support in it about 163. Volume isn't real big here today, uh, but that's where uh, support is. Uh, let's go ahead and turn that off to make this a little clearer. Um, you just really need to come back down and test 163 on lighter volume. Uh, that could set up a nice ABC on the way up. And what would that be? That'd be for five bucks down. Okay, so it'd be like 163 and eh, about nine bucks. So it could get back up to some resistance, which is around. 173 if this is an ABC on the way down or ABC on the way up excuse me 
but yeah, you'd probably want something like 164, 163 on light volume, and it doesn't look bad here so far. But uh, I think a lot of people are a little wigged out about some of the other stuff going on in the market, and uh, we shall see. Uh, okay, we got some more emails coming in, so we'll look at those. Okay, AMD was down like about three today, so we'll go through the usual suspects before we get to Cisco. Uh, yeah, just in this trading range here, I don't know if you can or think you can make a huge deal out of it. We'll look at its brother, which is NVIDIA. It's down, not a whole lot of juice. Uh, certainly could get back to 175. Of course, almost all these are massively shorted, so it's kind of tough for them to go down yet at all. Uh, MSFT, man, they've been flogging this one. Uh, and uh, not because of any kind of new news, but just because it's uh, been doing well, they expect it to do and continue well. Um, open lower, tried to push higher today, about half volume. So I don't know what's uh, into that, but not a great deal. Okay, so let's take a look in FLX. Look at some streamers because they were harping on those today. Uh, you basically came back uh, to the gap down on Netflix that had a ton of juice. That was on 420. No joke. Uh, 133. Uh, yeah, 133 million shares, and uh, yeah, in uh, one of the easiest uh, volume comparisons, it had about 9 million shares uh, compared to that gap. So not surprised that this thing's not doing much. Yeah, I'll take a quick look at Disney, but they've been pounding on these, uh, from what I could tell, out here, and kind of the same kind of look. Uh, in a lot of these, either W patterns or move back up to where the uh, big move started back lower. In Disney, this is also 420, and you got 421 with about 18 million shares. You actually had uh, 14 million shares yesterday, 24 million shares the day before. So there's a little bit more juice in Disney. Let's see what else out here that I wanted to look at real closely. Okay. Okay. Great question about IBB. We brought this up yesterday. As we said, this, so many of these stocks had gotten up to resistance levels. Uh, we were looking or thought maybe you could get 135, 136 out of it, but it looks like it's run into this resistance that it's had three times at 135 and a half approximately didn't quite get there a few days ago eh. I what I just don't like and this is pretty much I'm going to say 70 percent of the market has these kind of big W patterns and most of them had lighter volume at the lows like the IBB did on this case, the uh, June 16th low came in at 3 million shares compared to the 4.7 million shares on May 12th. So you got these big W patterns. You're getting back up to these previous highs, but you had a lot of energy on the way down. And you can see it on my power law vector indicator number at 4.6. And you had about a 2.9 on the way up. So you can look at that at being about 65% of the energy on the way back up. Um, Volume at the high, not as bad as one would think. Uh, 2.7 million shares uh, to begin with uh, back here on the high of April 5th. You have uh, August 11th with 2.1 million shares. So it was lighter. It wasn't like 1.5 million shares to th three. But uh, it is an ETF, and you should put a lot more weight on um, lighter volume on an ETF than you would on a regular ETF. Uh, equity. Uh, yeah, everybody's talking about the big W. And of course, uh, it's a mad, 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 mad world. But uh, yeah, oh, I think I actually have that. It's uh, got to be up here somewhere, doesn't it? Uh, yep. Oh, why did it do that? 
There it is. The W. It's all the W patterns out here. It's a mad, mad, mad world. And you got to watch that movie. I don't care what anybody says uh, or how dated. It's still hysterical. Great movie. But uh, under the W. And uh, when I built my house uh, down on the beach, I had a W. I said I had to have one. Okay. Uh, other things going on here. Um, back to the bonds. We talked about that a little bit. Uh, the 20-year bond auction uh, was uh, pretty horrific today. Um, we're headed back down. As I said, we're going to retest this 112 area on the TLT. That breaks. We're going to go back down to the bigger low, 107.71. We'll be back in a minute. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And uh, we're having a little bit of bear bull, uh, bear, uh, bull bear action out here as they keep trying to push it up and uh, a lot of people are willing to sell it out as it pushes higher, but uh, not all that much. Uh, let's see what we have. We've got more stuff going on here. Okay. And let's see. I think we got that. Okay. 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 And see. Let's go back here. See if there's anything else. Yeah. It just seems like a half hearted 
pop. So far, anyway. We'll see. Uh, do, do, do. What else do we want to look at here? Question about uh, what we're seeing in the VIX. I normally, because it's uh, UVXY, normally go to the UVXY out here. Um, you got a little bit lower out here. Uh, it is options expiration, and it's always kind of a uh, bullish environment for a lot of people. But uh, we made a fairly good indication yesterday that the high was in for the week. Uh, if you go back and look at it, I saw it yesterday, uh, you'll see, especially during options expiration week, there's a point where all the premiums uh, for out of the money uh, on the uh, week side, which was on the, on the uh, bearish side yesterday, in about 15 or 30 minutes, they'll just drop all the values of those at about 50%. So if uh, if a uh, put is uh, two bucks, for some strange reason, it'll go to one buck for about 15, 30 minutes and run all the stops. And then it just reverses and comes back all over them. But that's generally a pretty good sign that at least during options expiration week, uh, the, the highs end. So that high may still be there. But uh, I think maybe what we're debating on is how far we can pull back down, if at all. Uh, yeah, between men. <laughs> okay. Uh, to, to, to what else do we have? Uh, question looking about IBM. I don't know. It just kind of looks like dead money to me, but. Um, you're in this big trading range of 124. You got to 138 today. You did fill this gap down, which is kind of interesting. You just did it on no volume. So you gap down on earnings, which weren't very good on the 19th of July. Um, you've gone back through that level. You never really had any kind of volume. That's always a – if the markets head lower, you may want to look at that one as one of the leaders out here. Now, of course, the semis have been weak all day, along with uh, travel. Um, it's probably not as bad as you would think. Certainly, you got a doji out here, but more of a hanging man. So it's a little bit to the upside compared to the downside. But um, you know what? There just isn't a lot of juice in this right now. Certainly, you want to, and my guess is over the next couple of days, everybody is so massively bullish and uh, short a couple of stocks like AMD and NVIDIA, uh, not really short semis at all. Um, yeah, could you get back to 230, 235, 232, 50? That's a you know, that'd be about halfway into this gap higher from uh, the 10th, and that would be a nice pattern to set up. Let's take a look at Micron, which came off its highs fairly quickly up here at 65 bucks, which has been kind of resistance. Um, you didn't really have a lot of volume off, uh, but this still probably is going to come back and test 59. So don't see much in that. We looked at IBB. Uh, question about looking at the GDXJ. GDXJ. And see what we have here. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, you did, on the positive side, there was this gap higher, and you had some decent volume. That gap went back to the 28th of July, did it on 11.8 million shares. You dipped in there and hit it today with 5.5 million shares. So as far as the gold miners, it doesn't look like there's any kind of stampede. A little using a little Western lingo there uh, to come back and blow out that low. Um, you even came back uh, and down into it uh, back on the third. That was about eight million shares. So I'd watch it to the end of the day. But if you get less than seven million shares, I don't know if this thing pops again, but it certainly looks like it's 
um, setting up some consolidation for what you're looking at in gold. Uh, to, to question about Tesla. Well, I think I, I don't have the exact time to do it, but I suspect that we have the makings of a huge ABC on the way down for Tesla, and that's going to be mostly uh, because uh, of so many more EVs hitting the road over the next six months. I think people are going to have a lot more options than just having a standard Tesla. Eh, I think, to me, the people that are probably most likely going to, that would have bought a Tesla are probably going to buy an F1 for, uh, F-150. If they can crank out enough of those, maybe a Rivian, maybe some other stuff. But there are starting to be a lot of options. Tesla was very lucky uh, to have uh, a lot of people fool around instead of get on the stick early. Uh, but uh, from, um, like I said, I think the move may be down price uh, from 100 to 120 bucks. I think we have brought it up here that the average Tesla uh, monthly payment is over 900 bucks, where the average payment on an actual regular gas car is about 420 so or 425 it's in the low 400s for a monthly payment so for tesla what do we want to look at i just think we're probably pretty close i don't know if it takes a couple more months uh, for a few more of these cars to come out but i think a lot of people are going to go you know what that f-150 i kind of like it uh that uh tesla yeah it kind of looks like what everything's looked like for a while. I'd rather have a electric Ford Bronco or Ford F-150. Eh, just me. I know a lot of people, though. I think they, the same thing. It's kind of like a Prius. You could have had a uh, hybrid Prius for a long time, but, you know, you just didn't want to be like those folks. Anyway, uh, 877-927-6648. Um... NTLA, one of the CRISPR stocks that we're looking at today, um, went sideways, had one day that it popped, came right back. You're just out here at the lows, no volume. This thing just looks to me like there's probably somebody buying this thing at 60 or selling it. But man, it's tough to figure out which side these folks are on. But, uh, yeah, it's going to break here one way or the other. We'll be back in a minute. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors.
are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD. Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866 476 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. And I got a question here. What would I do? I'm going to sit on my hands to the clothes. I think uh, we've got fairly thin markets out here on both sides of the up and down right now as we look at, uh, yeah, what is that, uh, 4293? Is that the last one? Yeah, 42.93. Yeah, it's fairly thin, so uh, I'm not going to make too much uh, prognostications until I get to the close. I think that's going to tell us a great deal more than we see on what ends up being uh, something that could be cured by Rolaids. 877-927-6648 as we look at the rest of it. Uh, we looked at that. We looked at that already. We looked at that. See if there's anything else out here. A uh, question about Planeteer PLTR. If I could type correctly. Uh, do, 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 okay. You gap down, that was on earnings. You had huge volume. You never really did much other than come back up to it and pull back down. Yeah, I'm going to say it's probably going to take another couple of weeks for this thing to, to base out. I didn't see when I looked through the earnings and what they had to say that everything was that sour. But uh, just uh, maybe a lot of people decided to pile on short on the thing. But, uh, you know, I think if you wanted to buy it, you really are looking for a retest of about 825. I don't see much reason to getting in to it before then. Uh, do, do, do. Okay, what else do we have out here? Question about uh, DLR, uh, which is digital reality, uh, uh, a REIT. Uh, I know that uh, one of the big shots uh, of shorting, who shorted Enron, is short this. Um, I'm not a big fan of getting into these uh, stocks that are just kind of going sideways. And... Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much what you have here. Light volume, too. They just, you generally want to find something that has your back uh, against the wall to trade. And almost all these, you know, no matter what you think about it, it seems to go the opposite way first before it starts moving the way that you think it should. So I'm always a big fan of waiting until these things do break out of these tighter ranges. But that's it. Uh, da, da, da. Okay. Uh, take a look here. Okay. Uh, to, to Got a lot more emails here, so let's go through those real quick. Okay. Uh, okay, let's go through a few more here. Uh, oh, we never got to Cisco. Thanks, uh, John. Okay, 
after the bell tonight, of course, uh, Cisco um, blew up on earnings last uh, time, uh, gap down on the 19th of May, did so with uh, 97, almost 98 million shares. You're back into that gap and filling it with about uh, 13 million shares today, but you've had man, 20 million shares here, so we came back into it. Um, it seems to be one of these, at least the last few years, that always has traded lower after earnings and then still comes back. Uh, again, it's one of these stocks that's owned by everybody on the street. And for some reason, anytime it pulls back, they just buy more. And I don't know that they're not doing anything more than parking money in it, but it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot there, there. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Okay. And see, we got some more emails here. Let's go through those real quick. Okay, I take a quick look at UNG. Well, you certainly tested the high today. It doesn't run well. You came awful close, let me put it that way, within uh, 12 cents of testing the high for UNG, and you backed off of it. Uh, that is the June 8th high, $32.77, 14.7 million shares. Uh, you had uh, 4.5 million shares today. Yesterday, you had uh, 8.2. It's kind of the whole market. We've gotten back up to these highs, even things that looked really good like this. Um, or, or kind of on the light side. Maybe this is a long into the summertime. Um, you did have a fairly good day that got back into that candle with 12 million shares. So generally when you have a, an attempt, you pull back and it's not that big a one. You go back up and you still don't have any volume. Generally the idea is these things tend to just kind of chew through the highs. And I don't see anything in the current administration that changes the trajectory of higher long-term energy prices. Uh, it's something that there is their goal. Um, we'll see how long they stick with that. But uh, at the moment, I don't see anything that changes it. So if you're long it, even though it's got light volume here, I think you have to just sit on your hands and let this play out. We are into the most bullish uh, seasonal bias uh, for natural gas. And that's about now when the uh, big uh, energy companies, uh, producers, uh, electric producers, sign contracts for winter natural gas and uh, you know I can only assume that a lot of this is going to turn be turned into uh, LNG to be shipped to Europe uh, at some point so it's hard to be bearish about uh, UNG uh, crude continues to have uh, some fluctuations but uh, we've been able to uh, create a environment where no one's driving very far. In fact, they're driving less uh, than when uh, the height of the pandemic. And uh, you just wonder how that even works. But uh, we may have found the lows out here in crude today. Um, again, I don't think it's that critical to be exactly on time with these for the crude move. But uh, probably finding some kind of low, both in crude, probably in natural gas, Crude probably going to be a little slower to go back up to the highs. Natural gas, like I said, it uh, normally starts taking off like a shot in the last week or two of August. And you really don't have a week uh, time in that gas until about the 1st of May. Or, excuse me, 1st of March next year. So that's it. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. So I'll go out of here. We looked at Micron. Looked at. Oh, okay. Uh, when we come back, uh, we'll look at CCJ for Larry. And uh, yeah, I think it just takes a little time for these things to get going. We'll be back in a minute.
Mesa Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. As we're back. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, and let's uh, take a look here real quick. Yeah, like I said I think uh, much ado about nothing on those numbers. I think we're going to go back to the way we had by the close, but we'll see. It's starting to see a little bit of weakness. I just didn't think there was that much in that to be that bullish about or change anybody's idea of the trajectory of the market, but uh, eh, that's just me. Okay. Um, oh, we were looking at Kamiko out here. Again, you know, when the, the you make these big triangle patterns with uh, lower highs and higher lows, uh, you just really, I, I don't understand trying to go back and try to pick a direction before it actually does it. But generally, these things will, about 80% of the time, take off like a rocket to uh, one direction, either higher or lower. And within a few days, that finds out it's just a head fake, and it goes back down the other direction. So I'm almost always uh, in favor of hanging out and waiting for it to break out of this uh, area with a big move and then fade that move, either by the, the lows if it heads lower um, after heading higher. Well, no, excuse me. That is fade the first uh, head fake 
is what I'm trying to say. Generally, there's a lot of money in those trades, and I do like them. Um, we just haven't had a lot, and maybe that's uh, the end of the summer, light volume, that kind of stuff. But uh, not a lot here to hang your hat on, but uh, we'll see. Again, uh, interesting. we got uh, options expiration on Friday. You expect kind of the unexpected, but uh, it, not a lot of shorts in the, uh, except in a handful of stocks. So uh, probably upside limited. Uh, a surprise would probably bring in some downside. So when you can, not when you have to. We'll see you here tomorrow. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems